All right, so we got a question from, I've lost the comment now, but somebody says, what's the connection between the third eye uh, and the pineal gland and lucid dreaming? Now, I did actually make another video about this on my, on my YouTube channel, uh, specifically talking about how to unlock and open the pineal gland and how that can help you to lucid dream more. But I'm just gonna go a bit more into it um, just to kind of give you more up-to-date bit of information about the, the third eye, the pineal gland, and how you might be able to unlock it, how it can help you lucid dream, and actually how you, it can help you to connect to your higher self, your, your guides, and your um, soul, your purpose, and things like that. So, all right, so let's just get right into it. So firstly, the pineal gland, or the third eye, is like a small rice-sized piece of body. It's about this big, uh, and it's a very small, it has a really high blood flow. So compared to any other organ in the body, any other kind of thing, system in the body, it has the highest blood flow relative to its size. So what that means is that anything you ingest or put on your skin or inhale is gonna very quickly find its way to the pineal gland. And this is why there's been a global kind of uh, conspiratorial effort to have as much chemicals and junk and nonsense in your system as possible so that most of it will go to your pineal gland and sever your connection to source and make you more easily manipulated and controlled. And this is not just me saying this, there's a lot of research behind this. You can look into the dangers and uh, uh, effects of fluoridation. Fluoride in the water has been shown to increase the amount of phosphate crystals in the pineal gland, which is bad. Uh, it's also a poison. And you know, if you don't believe me, look on the back of your toothpaste bottle and it will literally say, if you ingest too much of this, call poison control because it's probably not good. And I actually discovered another confirmation of this recently is that I now have kind of a couple of pet rats. And so what I learned is that they have to have filtered water because the fluoride in the tap water is so dangerous that it could actually kill them. So you need to be very careful about fluoride in particular. Now, how can you open the, the third eye or the pineal gland as fast as possible and as easily as possible? So there's kind of two components to this. Right. The first one is the practical stuff you can do, the physical things, exercises, habits, and routines, and even equipment that you can buy that will help you to decalcify and open the pineal gland. And then the second part, which I'll go into a bit later on, is how you can use your willpower and actually request help from other sources and other dimensions, your higher self, your guides, uh, and there's a whole like team that you can ask to kind of come in and help you do that. Okay. So the first thing, the first step. The first step really is to understand that, well, like I said, there's a high blood flow going to that, that organ, the pineal gland, right? There's a huge amount of blood going through that organ. So the first thing you need to do is control and um, let's say clean up everything in your blood. So firstly, get a notepad, write down all of the different things that you put onto your body or you inhale or you uh, eat and drink on a regular basis. Things like your shampoo, your toothpaste, your deodorant, your face creams, your everything, all of these different things. And then you want to basically look for better versions of those things. And, and I mean, even down to the food you eat, uh, and I won't go too much into diet, because as uh, I'm sure many of you know, I'm uh, an advocate of the plant-based diet. Not vegan as such, but the plant-based for 90% to 95% of your calories, and there's a good reason for that. I made another video about that. Uh, but you wanna basically clean up the substances that you're putting on or into your body. In speci you know, specifically, you wanna focus on the things that you put in and around your mouth, like toothpaste, uh, the things that you put onto sensitive areas of your skin, like deodorant, because the un under the armpits is a very sensitive area. There's a high concentration of blood vessels there. And when you spray deodorant directly into those, into your um, uh, sweat glands, you obviously it has the effect of stopping you sweating, but at the same time, that stuff is going into your bloodstream and it's not good. I don't know if you've ever looked at the ingredients of an, uh, an antiperspirant or, uh, a deodorant spray, it's not very good, at least in terms of your, uh, your blood. You don't want that stuff in your bloodstream. All right, so then you wanna focus on your circadian rhythm, and this is actually a process that's heavily linked to the pineal gland, right? The, sec the secretion of hormones like serotonin and melatonin. I've spoken a lot about this in other videos. Uh, the, in a nutshell, you know, you want to follow the sun uh, as much as you can. So when the sun rises, you want to wake up and go outside and, and move around. When the sun sets, you want to slow down, you know, uh, turn off as much light sources, as, as much light as you can. Uh, turn off your screens, turn, you know, turn things onto, um, night mode, have things like this, which is a, a pair of blue light blocking glasses, 
uh, and download software like Iris or Flux to remove the blue light from the screens that you're watching. Now what that will do uh, is that will actually help your pineal gland to function better and a stronger pineal gland is less likely to be blocked by even if you are consuming some trace level of bad stuff. If you're not able to afford let's say a fluoride water filter let's say um, at least if your pineal gland is functioning properly and you're using the sun to regulate your circadian rhythm that's going to at least help compared to if you didn't do anything. So then you want to focus on things like having a sleep mask when you sleep or at least at the very least having a very dark room, having all of your LED lights turned off or like put some electrical tape over them, turn unplug things that you're not using and make sure that it's as dark and cold and quiet as possible because this will stimulate the production of melatonin uh, and obviously the, the more you do that the stronger the pineal gland will become and the more open your third eye pineal gland will become. And there's a few other things that you should be doing uh, on the side of that just before we get into the kind of more, uh, let's say, in intangible ways you can clear your pineal gland. So you want to be taking some kind of anti-inflammatory, something like a turmeric or a ginger supplement, uh, an omega-3 capsule, or if you're not, let's say, if you're not fully plant-based, a cod liver oil capsule, something like that. And then you also want to be supplementing with, um, at the very least, some kind of algae or spirulina extract. And what that will do is that will actually detoxify your system of things like fluoride and heavy metals, which might have accumulated in your bloodstream. Uh, and the most benefits you'll see from this will be after, let's say, one or two weeks of daily supplementation or, you know, taking this stuff daily. And I do actually on my other channel, um, it's not posted yet, but I will have on my Transcend Your Limits channel on YouTube, I will have a video about the Biohackers Breakfast, which is, in my opinion, the most nutrient-dense and uh, supercharging breakfast you can possibly have. It includes various different supplements, hydrogenated water, uh, but among all that stuff it also has this this kind of green super greens powder which contains 80 different nutrients and uh, amino acids, probiotics, prebiotics, and specifically spirulina. We're, and this, the effect of spirulina have been documented quite well. Um, it's able to bind to things like heavy metals and fluoride and eliminate them from your system much better than almost anything else. Okay, so you want to you want to be taking that every day if you can, okay? And this is especially true if you have been subjected to kind of EMFs a lot, which 99% of you have, including me. Um, EMFs is electromagnetic fields and this is produced by things like laptops, electricity, anything running an electrical current through it. The worst culprits for this are big LED TV screens, fans, um, anything big and you know big moving things uh, that are powered by electricity and things like if you have like um, an internet tower, worse even still a 5G tower or something producing high levels of radiation or electromagnetic fields. These things damage your pineal gland and your whole biological system as well to be honest but um, what spirulina will do is it will actually kind of reverse the effects of that. It will like, give you some kind of protection and uh, kind of fight back against that EMF damage. So just to uh, quickly move on now, I just a few more things you can do with EMFs is you can actually install like a timer switch. They're about seven bucks on uh, Amazon. A timer switch that will turn off your internet Wi-Fi router at the plug at certain times. Um, so let's say if you go to bed at 10, you could set this thing to go off and, and just turn the internet off at 10.30 or 10 and turn it back on again in the morning. So that at least you're getting six to eight hours Wi-Fi free every day. Makes a big difference over a long time, okay? And then you have things like obviously your phone uh, should be on airplane mode 99% of the time unless you need to make a call. Uh, the effects of phone radiation are very powerful and dangerous, especially to your pineal gland. But if you don't believe me, you can do things like there was actually a video uh, <laughs> released a while ago where they, they put like, um, like a, a piece of aluminium foil in the center of about 10 different phones and they had each phone call the phone opposite. Uh, so there's 10 phones laid out in a circle, the foil was in the middle, they had the phones call each other and it actually set the aluminium foil on fire. That's literally how powerful the uh, the effect of this radiation can be. Um, and I've seen various other tests where they like cook eggs and stuff. It's not good. And if you don't believe me, you can, well, try one of those experiments or get yourself a um, an acoustometer, which is a small device, it's about this big, and it costs about $20 on Amazon, and you can measure electromagnetic fields and electrical current. And so what you can do is you can actually hold your phone uh, next to this thing, and you can measure the current coming off of it, you can measure the electromagnetic field, and it's not good. <laughs> this thing, the, the device, when you hold it near your phone, it will be beeping like crazy, it will be giving you the red warning light, 
not good, right? So when you're not using a phone airplane mode, uh, if you want to go one step further, you can actually get a little pouch like this, which is a Faraday pouch, which is um, lined with kind of insulating, electrical insulating material so that no signal can get through um, the, the pouch, right? But you, you probably don't need this. It, it's just as effective to, to put your phone on airplane mode. And then what you can also do is, uh, I don't actually have it with me up here, but you can get this little uh, pad to put underneath your laptop, which blocks out all of the radiation coming from the Wi-Fi chip. Um, and that again is something that you can measure. Like I, I've seen with my own eyes, the effects of that radiation on the acoustometer and the pad, it's quite expensive. It's about $90 on Amazon, actually that one, uh, but it blocks out everything, right? So you've got to consider we're sitting on our laptops, you know, firstly the phones, we're always holding it ne next to our brains not good. <laughs> and then we're sitting with our laptops directly over our groin uh, and the radiation is basically being emitted in all directions around your Wi-Fi chip when really it only needs to be connecting from the laptop to the router. So it doesn't need to be going through your body, right? So this is why you need to have that little pad. And so the pad is very useful um, for blocking out the EMF radiation from your laptop. Now, an another, th another thing recently is people have started using these infrared thermometers to measure your temperature. Uh, for whatever reason, they should not be pointed at your forehead because as I said, the pineal gland is literally here. And so when you shine an infrared beam through your brain, it's not good for the visual uh, optical cones in your pineal gland it's not good for anything. And you can just as easily take your temperature from your wrist, which is why that's always what I suggest uh, you do. That's certainly what I do. So that's how you can block out the effects of EMFs, which are quite dangerous to your pineal gland and your third eye. So, and I could go into more detail on that, but that's really the realm of my other channel, which is called Transcend Your Limits, which you can find in the on my YouTube on the sidebar. I go a lot more into detail there about biohacking and optimizing your body and using all kinds of crazy contraptions uh, one more thing I should mention is that you should uh, invest in something called an infrared sauna, which um, I can't really show you very easily without moving everything around here, uh, but I'll just show it to the camera that I'm actually filming on. Uh, and so you can see here, it's an infrared sauna. And uh, basically what that will do is that when you sweat, firstly, if you go into any sauna, it's gonna be good, right? Because when you sweat, you release toxins and you detox your body. Uh, but when you have, when you go into an infrared sauna or an infrared, I should say, sauna, the infrared light goes much deeper than just a normal heat sauna would. So the infrared light actually penetrates between four and six inches into your body and makes you sweat from the inside out. Instead of just, for example, your skin getting hot and then you sweat because you need to cool down. This actually kind of heats up your cells from the inside out. And you might think that's bad, but the effects of infrared uh, saunas have been shown to increase your lifespan, you know, to increase cell regeneration, improve your immune system, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but among that, why I'm mentioning that, is that they cause you to sweat out heavy metals and toxins like fluoride, and like other things, uh, not just fluoride, but heavy metals and toxins. So at the very least, get yourself a pair of blue light blocking glasses like this, make sure your phone is on airplane mode, and do things like that. Now you wanna start thinking about the more intangible side to things. That's like the basics. All right, that's the basics. What you also want to be doing is to be meditating twice a day, at least for, I would say, between five and 10 minutes, uh, at, at the bare minimum, five minutes twice a day, okay? In the morning and in the last thing in the evening. And then you also want to be subconsciously and consciously kind of asking and opening your mind up to your guides and your higher self. This is where I'm gonna lose everybody who's only scientific minded, and that's fine. But you want to be asking for help with, with doing this, right? Now you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a prayer. You can call it an affirmation, a mantra. You know, you can call it um, whatever you really want to. But the idea is you just want to ask specifically your higher self to come in and help to unblock and open your third eye. At the same time as doing that, you want to be constantly going back to your intuition. All right, so your intuition is very cl uh, closely linked to the pineal gland, and it's the idea that you can kind of sense whether something is bad or good. You can kind of sense whether if somebody's energy is slightly off, even without really knowing why you sense it. You can sense whether you should go down one path or another one. And you know, at a higher level, you can sense what your purpose is, where you should be going, uh, and more advanced things like that. But specifically, you want to be listening more to your intuition, because that's when messages will come from your higher self directly through the pineal gland, into your informational system to be interpreted by your brain. All right, so I hope that helps with uh, unblocking and opening your pineal gland and your third eye. Now, specifically for lucid dreaming, now, I, the reason I've left this till last is because lucid dreaming is kind of the tip of the iceberg with this stuff, right? When you open your third eye, you're opening yourself up to 
a whole range of different things, right? Your purpose, your messages will come, downloads will come in, uh, and you'll have more access to things outside of this physical uh, duality-based dense reality that we call Earth. So I hope that's helped. If you want to use this to lucid dream, basically when you do those things, you will naturally have more lucid dreams because the lucid world is a way to connect to those higher dimensions in one way or another. Okay, even let's say if you aren't able to connect to higher dimensions to your pineal gland by using those things to unblock your third eye, you will then have more lucid dreams, which then get you onto that kind of frequency where you can be open to those other things. So I hope that's made sense. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.